Welcome to a new breed of golf live. Michael Breed here from the Morgan Franklin Transformation Studio and excited to be able to come to you on a week when Tiger Woods is playing some golf. We're all fired up. We all want to play some golf. We all want to see him play really good. And obviously, uh, my expectation is it's going to happen. There are a lot of you. Well, we did the the over under at 73 on um, on a, a new breed of golf on Sirius XM. There were many of you that thought he's going above 73. And uh, I'm thinking he's going under. And there were a lot of you that were going under. The poll is still up there on Twitter. So if you're interested in getting involved in that, um, we're right now, I think, uh, I don't know exactly know what the number is, but we were over 500 early on. So my guess is, is that that's going to approach 1,000 or so by the time the uh, by the time this, this poll ends. Anyway, excited to be able to talk to you today about how the lower body works properly. And you can see I've already got some some instructional devices out here to help you understand. We're going to paint an image for you. And I got a good friend from a, a, a good call, a, a call from a good friend of mine, um, Mr. Cosby. Mr. Cosby, you know who you are. Um, and so excited to be able to talk about this. Before we get into this, let me tell you a couple of little different things. We've got those blessed poker chips. We're selling those at the, at the speaking things that we're doing, at the golf shows that we're doing uh, all over the place. And we're going to be in New York in a month. But if you're interested in getting some of our blessed poker chip ball markers all you need to do is you, you got one of those for me greg just, i got one of these my just favorite toss color. it there nice. you go oh look at this one this is the lav it's lavender yeah don't you love the way that looks so is this your this is your favorite one that's my favorite yeah you know cool. do you have one of these i do let me give you one oh, i'll have another <laughs> okay here okay, hey gibsy make sure you make the catch on this one get get the catch on this one gregory making that grab by the way that's Steve Gibbs right there. And of course, there's Greg Ducharme, his smiling face over our blessed poker chips. How many so, birdies is this worth, by the way? Well, if you have three of them, you're taken care of for the entire round. I'm shooting in the <laughs> 60s all year. You might even be in the 50s with three of those <laughs> things in your pocket. <laughs> anyway, so we got those also, too, by the way. You can't see this. We got the new breed of golf uh, hats, which have let's do this on the side right there. We're selling those as well. So if you're interested in getting a hat, which why wouldn't you? It's only the most beautiful hat going. Just send an email to me as well. So we got hats, we got poker chips, we got some other stuff that's going to be coming all year long. And we're going to be here all year long for you to help you play better golf. Now, you already met Gibbsy and, and Greg, and now it's a chance for me to be able to talk to you about the function of the lower body. And let me tell you where this came from. So I had um, Butch Harmon on, on uh, my show on Sirius XM, A New Breed of Golf. And he talked about things that he's been working on with Ricky Fowler. And one of them was getting the, the club on the proper plane, getting his arms a little bit higher, had gotten a little bit flat over time. And then the second thing was he's working on trying to get the hips to turn properly. And what was happening was when, when Ricky first started lifting the club up into the air, the club was getting a bit laid off. And so he said, okay, great, get comfortable with that. And then when Ricky did, then what he said was, okay, now what we want to do is we want to add a little hip turn and get that the lower body to work a little more efficiently. And so... What I wanted to do today was to just talk to you about how to get your lower body more involved. And more importantly, what does it look like when it is or it isn't working properly? So I want to talk to you about, about that. Let me um, show you what we're going to do here. So I'm going to start with this little swim noodle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right on my trail hip right here. Now, I don't know, Gibbsy, if you could take a five and zoom in on that, but what I see most people with poor lower body motion do is they take the, the trail hip right here and they bump it into this. You can see how that swim noodle goes up into the air, right? And the hips are only sliding. They're only going like this. And now what you can see is when I slide like that, go back to that other shot if you would, Gibbsy. When they go like that, now my spine tilts towards the target. Well, when we get set up properly, my, my spine has a slight tilt away from the target. Again, depending upon the length of the club. With the driver, it's going to be a little bit more. With a six iron, it's going to be more, but it's a little less than the driver. And obviously, with a pitching wedge or a sand wedge, it's the least that there is. There's still a little bit, but it's very, very small. So what I don't want to do in the golf swing is get to where I'm tilting this forward. There is left side or lead side bend there is that that happens but we want that to happen in this position not in this position and when you start sliding your hips 
laterally here, the upper body isn't going to turn efficiently or effectively. And then as a result, if you go down the line, that's correct. The hands don't have any depth. And if the hands don't have any depth, what you end up getting is you end up getting a real slice. So let me show you what this is going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to put this up over here. I'm going to record a face-on view of this. And I'm going to make the, the slide. So I'm going to set this here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this. So hips are going to slide. So here we go. Slide and there. Now, let me show you. And, and Greg, if you could hold on to the club data, because this will be an important one. So watch what happens as this starts to go. So there's space right in here. There's where the, the thigh is. Now, slide, 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 slide tilt right there and now my spine is like that and my trail thigh is like that you can see the knee is bowing out that way and there's a lot less pressure on the inside part of that trail foot let me go back to watch the trail foot here watch how all that weight gets to the outside it just totally tips the foot and then you come down club comes down now there's no rotation through that strike. That ball had nothing. That, that ball left at 92 miles an hour. It was a miss hit. 92 miles an hour. Now, Gibbsy, I don't know if you've got that camera three set up. Perfect. Now, look at what happened with this club data. So we have the path of the club going out to in 7.1 degrees. You wonder where you're hitting your slice, why you're hitting your slice. Well, it's coming from this going across 7.1 degrees. Now, let's hit one again. Only this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'm going to set that up like this, set that up here. Now, I'm going to record this. So let me go back here, do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hip the way I want to move my hip. Now let me tell you, when this moves, this is going to move this way. So I'm going to get space in here, okay? So I'm going to hit this, and then we're going to look at all the things that are going to happen as a result. So this hip going away from that and turning back. Now I hit that shot. That club moved at... 82 and a half miles an hour. The ball speed was 120, call it 121. That ball flew 184 yards and, and had an apex of 96 feet. Now, so there I am at the top of the swing versus, let's bring up the, the last one here. And let's go to the top of the swing over here. So look at the difference in, in these positions. First of all, look at the back. The back has a slight tilt away from the target. Here, this back is tilting towards the target. At the top of the swing over on the left-hand side, my forearm and the side of my head are very close to one another. Over here, look at how my forearm, my trail forearm and the side of my head, look at how far apart they are. In fact, you can even see the trail shoulder right there. And then obviously, look at what how, how the lower bodies, um, this here and this here look so dramatically different. Look at the trail, look at this trail thigh. That trail thigh is, is that way. And the, if I draw from my, my hip down, it's inside the heel. When I go from the hip down 90 degrees, so that right there is 90 degrees. It's outside of the, the trail heel. And all of a sudden, there's no rotation whatsoever. And now, let's take a look at, at the information that we get with the club. So come on over here to camera three. And this is, so the other one was 7.1 degrees from out to in. This is 6.2 degrees from in to out. You wonder why you're hitting a slice? Because you're not moving your lower body correctly. Okay, you're sliding those hips. Kaz, 
You're sliding those hips, big boy. What I need you to do is I need you to ro rotate. Now, let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to bring this in. Gibbsy, if you could, give me our newly positioned camera seven, which will be fun. Yeah, so that's perfect. So here we are right here. And you can see that what I have, let me just bring this back just a little bit. So hold on for me, because these things move. There we go. So I move that back just a little bit. Now, when I get set with this here, what you're going to see is you can see there's space in between. There's space in between this blue and my, my can. Now, when I turn properly, my hips should go back this way. You can see how the pocket of my pant starts where this first swim noodle is. And when I take it back, now all of a sudden the pocket of the pant is over here. And my can now is over the top of this, this PVC pipe. When I start, it's well inside. Rotate back into there. And now all of a sudden, I have depth in my hip. And when I have depth in that hip, now... If you, if you look at what's happening with the heel, so take camera seven and just, just pan it down just a little bit. Give me a, a little bit of space down below. Yeah, there you go. Now watch what happens with the heel. So I go like this and you can see how the pant leg changes. You see that right there? Look at how that pant leg right here. Look at how this changes. So I go from having a little bit of bend in there to that pant leg straightening out. Now, my knee doesn't straighten but it straightens out a little bit. It doesn't get totally straight, but it straightens out a little bit because of the hip rotating. Now, give me a face on shot here. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at what this hip is doing. When this hip is rotating back, it's actually going back towards the Morgan Franklin sign, but it's also going up towards the sim. It's going this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to videotape using camera three. So camera three is, is up top. So now I'm going to take that, straighten that out just like that. So that looks pretty good there. Maybe that angle is, is not quite exactly the way I want, but you'll be able to see what's going on. So now we go here. And Gibbsy, if you could, bring that camera, bring that the hub there full, because I want to just make sure. So here I am here. And I'm going to... There you go. So you can see how my butt is just on that blue thing right there. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my backswing and I want you to see what happens with this, with this hip. Okay. And there's another good swing, a little bit of right to left movement to it. Now, let me go up here. So this is where my hip is right there, okay? We start to take the club back. Club works a little bit to the inside. Hip rotates, hold on. Hip rotates to about right here. This is where my hip is. So my hip started here. Hip started right there, and it moved back to right there. So you can see what's happening with that hip is it's going back and around. And by the way, we go to the to the start, the lead hip is right here, and then it goes into the backswing, and now that lead hip is right about there. And so this is going forward and around. So you can see how the hips are twisting. But what's vital to understand here is this. The trail hip is going forward and backward. Believe it or not. It's going away from the strike line and towards your target. That's the forward, towards the target. Away from the strike line is the backward. So your heels are, are into the ground and then they're getting really twisted into the ground. That, that trail heel getting really twisted into the ground as that hip is moving back and around. So you have to have this image of this hip going like this. All right, now let me, I'm going to give you a, another overhead shot here. And I'm going to use something to give you an idea. So I got my string here. Now, 
this is what's going to happen. This, this hip, I'm going to just make this up, is going to start like that. So go to that overhead shot. That's right. So my hip starts over here, and then it twists back into that position right there. So it's going to actually twist back something like that. So I get set up here. There's my lead hip right on that spot there. And then it goes back right to that V1. See how that works? And what you can see is there's no slide. It just goes, it just twists right in there like that. And this is a wonderful drill for you. Go ahead and pull up two again. This is a wonderful drill for you. What you do, and it's hard to do this, but you can do it with your own eyes. You just set this thing up like this, and you can use it on the front as well. And all you're going to do is you're just going to look at that moving back. Just feel this knee stretching back like that. If you go to a camera one shot, Gibbsy, if I, if, I, if I look at my uh, pocket, I got a mirror right here. I look at my pocket. That pocket is moving back and around back and around. And as I move back and around, now all of a sudden my arms and hands have depth. Okay? And when I get when I start to get some depth, now that's when I really start to plaster this ball. So let me I'm going to record one here in the down the line view and I'm going to show you how the club is now going to work. We already I, I painted that picture for you. Can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was 6.2 degrees that it came from the inside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the same thing. I'm not going to worry about setting up into this properly, but I'm going to really twist those hips. Watch how deep, and we're recording it, how deep the hands get. And when I get some depth, that one there had 124 miles an hour of ball speed. It also, by the way, had a nice little draw to it. So now, come on over here, Gibbsy. So here's where the lead pocket is. Here's where, uh, that's where the right cheek is. Now we start to go into the backswing. So now the handle of the golf club is outside of the, the trail heel. And when it's outside of the trail heel and that you can see that hip actually sit, and I'm going to just draw this. You can see how deep this has gotten both the pocket and the hip right in there. And now what happens when I do this is now this club gets to the top and now when it starts to come down, now it's going to come from the inside. So we look at this delivery position, which is right there. And you can see how this club shaft is now pointing out to the, to the right side. And when it's pointing out to the right side, now I got a chance of starting this ball out to the right. So watch the club come in here. Club comes from the inside, strikes the ball. Yeah, you can almost see that ball jump to the inside. That was perfect. Club face a little closed. Club path goes down the line. So now come over here. Camera three again, Gibbsy. And what we did now, I went for a massive amount of hip turn. Massive amount of hip turn. And the club now 8.5 degrees from the in inside. You want to get rid of that slice? You've got to get that club coming from the inside. Yes, I tell you all the time, face, 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 path. 8.5 from the inside. And all of a sudden, when I do that, now look at what happens with my club head speed. Maybe hard to see right there, but that's 79.2 miles an hour of club head speed. So I don't have the maximum amount of club head speed that I can attain. But at the same time, what do I end up getting? I end up getting 192 yards in carry because it's so solid and it's going so much like this that it takes off like a bullet. All right. Now, let me put all these things down again. Get in here. By the way, uh, two things I wanted to tell you. The first one is that um, if you have any questions, make sure you jump, as we always do, make sure you jump into the chat and, and get those questions. Greg, I'm sure we've got some questions already, but I, I, I've got a couple more things that I want to share with you. So we'll get to those questions in a second. And then the other one is, there's many of you going, well, Michael, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't have the access to all the things that you have. Actually, you do. If you get the, the V1 Golf app, you can just put your camera on a tripod 
right down the line, set it up the way you want, and then you can videotape this. Now, I'm with you. You don't have a, a V1 camera above you. I get it. I get it. You don't have that access. I understand. But you can do this yourself. And this is something that's very easy to do. And frankly, one of the most important things that you can do. And the other thing is, is that you can monitor hip movement, right? Like I said before, we take this thing here, pull this up, set this onto my hip. When I'm doing my, my hip turn properly, this is moving away from that. I'm going to videotape that in just a second. But you can get that V1 app and it's got all the tools that you need to be able to draw, replay, slow down, go back, save it compare it. You can do all the same things that I'm doing with that V1 app. Now, I'm going to shift this into a face-on view. And then, Gibbsy, if you could, just, just kind of go close up in on that, on that five, if you would. Okay? So here I am. Sorry. So setting this to right there. That is almost touching. Right there. Now, what I'm going to do when I turn my body properly here is that hip is going to move away from there. Look at how that, that gaps. So right there, not a big gap. Right here, there's a massive gap. And that's what you want to try to feel. Okay? So in here like this, feel that massive gap gain. And now we go. Boy, that one started way out to the right. Oh, I didn't, ca I didn't capture it. My fault. Let me try it again. Let me try it again. By the way, pretty good strike. Just a little bit of a open club face there. Okay. All right. So now I'm good. That thing's still clicking away. Okay, good. So here we go. Massive rotation in that hip. Boom. Boom. Crushed. 120 on that one. Now, let's come over here and see what we get here. So there's my thigh right there. There's the lead thigh right there. All right, so a little shift. So I'll erase that and put that on there again. And now body rotates. Look at the gap. And that's inside of where the thigh started, that yellow line. But look at the gap from here to here. And I'm going to bring this down into impact. You can see how that slides. Now that's how it works. So when we start going forward the hips have turned 45 degrees they stay 45 degrees turned for about between an inch and three inches depending upon the club there's a definite slide of the pelvis going this way and then the hips then start to open back up again and twist so you can see that happens now the hip starts to wind out push off the lead leg club from the inside and here we go into impact. So there's impact right there. Now, let me just show you. I'm going to erase all this stuff. So there's a dress. So a dress, top of the swing, a dress, top of the swing, a dress, top of the swing. Look at this lead leg. Or this, just a little bit of, there's a little bit of, of, narrowing there too because my hips are as wide as they possibly are at address once i start turning now the lead hip is going towards camera uh two and then the trail hip is going away from camera two there and so what happens is is that it gets narrower which is why this hip and this hip is narrower than this hip and this hip i should actually do this in blue so let's do this in blue because this is the starting line of the hip here and there. And then here, you can see how my hips now have turned inside that. That's why people talked about turning in the barrel. You can see how it's gotten narrowed up, which means that that trail hip has moved away from that starting point and the lead hip is turned away from that starting point. So when you want to try to generate more club head speed, when you want to try to get that club coming more from the inside, look directly at your hips. Because what happens to most of you is, frankly, as you get older, you do a lot more sitting. And when you do a lot more sitting, you start teaching your hips to not move. And they get locked in. You lose external and internal rotation of the hips. And all of a sudden, your body can't make the motion. 
And so you've got to, you've got to, first of all, get assessed, go to somebody that knows what they're talking about, TPI uh, preferred, but obviously somebody that, that understands what goes on with the body and what you have to do to get the rotation. And then you got to do it. And my favorite, this is my favorite thing to do when it comes to hips. I use this drill right here. I happen to have all this stuff. You don't necessarily need to have all this. You can do this with a golf club. You put a golf club right up against that and you just turn that, make sure that that hip, that that club falls down. Gibbsy, if you can give me a, a camera one on there. We've done this a million times. This sits right on the pocket, right on the seam. When you twist, you go that way. If you give me a camera two, what happens if I don't, if I slide, this handle will go up and you can see that. Now all of a sudden this hip, you can see how they tilt. So if I put my hands right here, they're level. If I slide, they tilt. And I want them to rotate this way and stay somewhat level and that club to, to fall down behind me. So what I do is I get set up. I take this thing just like this. And by the way, I remember doing this when I was younger and when I didn't have all this stuff, I had an umbrella and I would stab the umbrella in the ground. And then later, somebody gave me a broken shaft and I used a broken shaft and I stabbed that into the ground. Those of you that are teachers, you know that that's something that you've used, broken shafts, stabbing into the ground for, for a variety of different um, instructional, uh, I'll call it devices, but for a variety of different, different instructional maneuvers. And so this thing to me in the indoor environment was fabulous. Set up like this, right on the outside of that hip. So I, what I try to do is I try to feel that bump and I feel that pressure. So I feel that there. And then what does it feel to not get any pressure? So now I'm going to, I'm going to really give this one a little bit of a crease. And I got that one. That's 123 miles an hour of, of club head speed. Starting out to the right-hand side, having a little twist to the left. Gibbsy, I don't know whether you can capture that maybe in, in a 4 or a 10 up there, but you can all see 180. That was 187 in the air. The apex was 102. The, the uh, vertical launch, 18.3. And, and more importantly, uh, ball speed is about 123 up in that upper right-hand corner. So here's your ball speed right here. I'll call that 123. And so... What you can see clearly is, is that when you start to use the hips properly, the path of the club is going to go to the, to the push side. The speed of the club is going to go way up and your ability to hit a draw is now increased. You got to make sure you have that club face in the right spot, but your ability to draw the ball is increased. All right. All right. Let's get to, uh, let's get to a few questions here, Gregory. Okay. Uh, first and foremost from JNIM, define depth. Is it hands away from you? Do they also need to be not only away from you, uh, but also somewhat behind you? So, yeah. So depth to me, um, it's it's literally in a down the line view here, Gibbsy. If we go to camera one, depth to me is how far my hands are outside of my shoulder at the top of my swing. So when I get to where, and it's not flat, it, you can be, it can be interpreted that way, but it's not that, it's here. So if I, if I don't have depth in my swing, now I'm here and you can see that my shoulder is outside of my hands right here at the top of the swing. This is gonna be a more upright swing, right? Obviously we talk flat and upright. There is some degree of flattening in order to get, to get depth. But what it does as well is it allows me to take this, path hand path arm path and make it come a little bit more from the inside so if i have the if i want to hit a cut i'm going to go here and make sure that my trail arm is pushing the handle out this way so it's up in here and then that ball is going to start over to the left hand side and when i get that club face a little bit more open that will have motion to the right to it but that ball started about three degrees to the left hand side okay now if i want to get the draw which is what we're all begging for i got to get a little bit of depth so we make this backswing back here my hands are back here now i get that glide that drops my hands under then you rotate now all of a sudden the club is coming from the inside and when you do that now you're going to get that ball to start out to the push side so you get a lot of rotation you get a, a, a nice amount of depth in the hands right in here and now the club goes and pushes that ball out to the right-hand side. This one has a nice little draw to it, almost in that basket. 
And let's see what the path is on that one because this will be interesting. Yeah, there you go. So go to camera three if you could, Gibbsy. And I know you got a lot of different things going on over there. But camera three, there you go. And then you got 9.3 degrees on the uh, in to out path right there. Okay. All right, Gregory, what do we got? Okay, next from Ted. Michael, can you explain the difference between proper rotation and spinning out? Yeah, I can actually. So, so proper rotation has, believe it or not, a little bit of lateral in it in the downswing. So proper rotation is the body rotates this way, and then there's a little bit of bump forward. So believe it or not, Butch's dad, Claude, Masters champion, as you all are well aware, he used to, the analogy he used to give was feeling like you had your hands full of groceries. So you got two bags of groceries and you got to close the car door. And what he would do is he would, he would get you to feel like you're just doing this. So your hips stay closed and they bump. You're bumping it with the hip this way. So you go, boom, bump the car door. Now that is important for rotation. When we're spinning out, what happens is you never get the bump. So you get turned back here like this. And then from here, you pivot this way. And all of a sudden, you have all this weight on the trail leg. You don't ever transfer your weight to the lead side because you haven't done the bump. So you get in here, bump. So not only do my hips go, but you can see there's just a little bit of upper body movement. Boom there. And then rotate. And now all of a sudden, I have a light trail leg. When I spin out... I have a heavy trail leg and my lead leg can get light to the point where it can actually do that maneuver, which never looks good, never looks good. And it never results in a good shot. That's basically the difference. You got to feel like, believe it or not, true rotation, there's a little bit of lateral in there. So the hips are going to, they're going to spin back lateral, then spin again. And when that starts to happen, then you start to hit it, hit it really well. The spinning out thing, you get no lateral. Okay. All right, Gregory. All right. From David. Uh, hey, Michael, I love your stuff. I suffer from a little bit of early extension. Are there any good drills to help avoid that? So, yes, actually, there is. So what I like to do with early extension is I like to do this. So, so um, Gibbsy, there's going to be a need for uh, one and seven here. But what I like to do is I like to do th this just happens to be here. So what I like to do is I like to feel like I'm pushing back. If I have a, a an early extension issue, I like to feel like I'm going to try to push this arm so that it moves back. So I set the arm like that, get set up here. Then when I start to come down, I want to sink both of my cheeks back into this thing and push this arm back and then rotate. Okay, so I do that until I get a feeling of what that feels like. Then I put this into a modest little drill. And I, I love being able to separate certain parts of a swing for a period of time in order to gain it. And so what I like to do is this. If you go to camera one, I like to get up to the top. I like to push back right here and then swing down. Okay, so... Rotate back, push back, which when you push back, you actually start opening up. Believe it or not, when you get to here and you push both back, your chest opens up and then just come right down into that strike. So you do that, you separate that in a one, two, three. Make the turn, push back, rotate through. One, two, three. Take your time in between each one of those segments. And then the next thing you do is you go slowly. So we go here. Push back. So here, push and then go. And what you'll see, in fact, you know what I'll do is I'm going to go back to my V1, record this. Okay. And you can keep it uh, on that. I'll just show them later. So in here, push back and then go down. Now, watch what happens when I do the pushback. So here's where my 
my can is, and there's the top of my head right there. So now I take the club back. Everything's pretty much right where you would want it. My head is right about where, where it was. My can's right about where it was. And now watch what happens. When we start to go down here, now I start to go pushing back. And when I push back right there, what you can see is, is that now my right uh, butt cheek is out past that yellow line. But where it's really obvious is the amount that my head has dropped. That's an enormous drop. Now the club is coming down. Now I'm still back and I'm still under. So lower body back, head under. And now there's my spine tilt. So by pushing back, I maintain that spine tilt and now I'm not, I'm not early extending. Okay, so simple. And I'll tell you the other thing that you could do, by the way, which is always fun to do, I do this a lot, is without a golf club, go back to that one again, if you would, Gibbsy. This is a wall. So this might be a wall in your house, might be a door, whatever. And what you do is you get set up in your posture, cross your hands across your chest, make your backswing, and then all you're going to do is just go boom, put like sandwich your can right up against that wall or door. Boom, put it in there. And when you do that, watch my head drop down. See how the head drops down? And when I start pushing back, my body rotates. I'm not thinking about rotation. When I think about pushing back, my brain goes, well, wait a second. In order for me to get my left cheek on that wall, I got to rotate. You don't think about it, but it does. So you go, boom, and now we're into that lead side, and then boom, we come up out of it. So then you, you do that inside a wonderful drill. And, and this is something that I said today on the radio show. And I'm, I'm, you know, my wife shared this with me uh, last night or two nights ago. She told me that if you can do something for 15 to 18 minutes a day for one full year, you will be better than 95% of the people that do whatever it is that you, whatever skill you're trying to develop, you will be better than 95% of them with just 15 to 18 minutes a day of doing the same thing. I did this drill. I'm not kidding you. I did this drill five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the middle of the day and five minutes at night for years, literally years. And I got good at it. I used to early extend and I did this drill nonstop and my body started to move a little bit differently. And I felt the footwork a little bit different. Uh, in fact, Greg, this is something you and I have talked about catching the pig's tail, yes. which was something that, um, my friend, uh, Chuck cook talks about, but anyway, so I'm going to now go at this the way that I want to go at this. I'm not going to think about sitting in there, but obviously that's going to be a part of what I'm training in my brain. So it goes here, sit, and then out. And all of a sudden I've got speed. I can rotate, but I'm not coming out of that shot. Boom. Okay. Do that. I'm telling you 15 to 18 minutes per day. You're only a year away. All right, Gregory, go ahead. Uh, also, if you want a little more on early extension on Michael's page in the live section, we did a, a video called Stop Early Extension just three weeks ago. So you can also find that there. Yep. Of course, catchy, catchy name, by the way. Yes. Um, I, would, I would recommend waiting till the end of this video, and then you can go check, that, check uh, <laughs> the next one out. This one from Michael. I'm having issues with sliding my hips toward the target. I'm guessing that I'm subconsciously trying to hit the ball farther and faster. Do you have a fix? So sliding the hips towards the target. Yeah, I do have a fix. This one goes like this. So we take this thing. We put this over here like this. And I set this down here like that. Now I've gone a bit too far. I need to move this back a bit, but yeah. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my thigh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, okay, when I come in here and what I like to do when I'm trying to learn something is I, I want to do it wrong and then do it right. Don't just try to do it right. Do it wrong as well. And when you start to do it wrong, you'll start to feel, oh yeah, I feel that. I feel like I'm doing this or I feel like I'm doing that. If you spend all your time working on doing it right all the time, It'll be beneficial, but it'll it'll take a little bit longer. I like to go, okay, so what does it feel like when I do it wrong? I go like this. What does it feel like when I do it right? I do this. Now, coincidentally, the way that you, you do this properly is you get that 
that lead cheek to get on that wall again. But this is another, another wonderful drill. And again, a drill that I've done many, many times in my career, put something on the outside part of that, that lead thigh. So I don't touch it. It's, it's about, I, I, again, I, I said to you before, you've got about one to three inches of lateral that you want in there. So what I like to do is I like to give it three inches. So I'm going to just say it's the, the, my fist. So I get set up, fist outside that thigh. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing and then feel like I'm going to miss that. And then eventually I'm going to hit it with my thigh when I go through the shot. But I don't want to, I don't want to hit this before I hit this, right? Don't hit this. You want to hit this before this. So here we go. So in here, I got that ball position there. And now we go. And what'll happen is you're gonna to start to feel this lead leg and this, this arm will pop up because your hands are gonna come through. But my lead leg now all of a sudden went dead straight. Dead straight. So we go here like this. And now I'm away from it. You can see I'm away from that. So now we go here, one fist, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, my leg is dead straight. Shot is also pretty well dead straight. So a lot of good things there. So you can do two drills with that. You can use that, that one that I talked to you about before where you, where you kind of cross your arms across your chest and you put your can up against that, that wall and make sure you bump that wall shut. Or you can do this one where you take a little uh, swim noodle here, put it outside, one fist outside the lead thigh, the lead thigh, not the lead hip, the lead thigh, and then make sure that you don't hit it. So you practice sliding into and hitting it, which you're good at. And then, okay, how do I do that? What does that feel like I'm doing? And eventually I think what you're going to feel is you're going to feel real straightening of that lead leg, real popping of that lead leg, and that hip is going to be moving around as a result. Okay? All right. Go ahead, Gregory. Okay, from Jeff. Um, Michael, you guys are the best. Thank you. Uh, Right-handed, how do you avoid too much right side bend and getting stuck? Uh, I have film and ample hip rotation but I still get stuck. Yeah. Okay. So this is Greg. I bet you right now you could tell what's his name again, Jeff, Jeff. I bet you right now you could tell Jeff exactly the drill that I'm going to do because this is, this is my favorite drill. This is my goat. Like of all the drills that I have that I go, okay, this is my favorite of all of them. And it's the one where the golf ball is outside of my lead foot and inside the strike line. So gives you, if you go to a camera one for me, great. So strike line is right here. I've got the ball inside that strike line. So it's lined up on the heel of the golf club. And then what I do when I do this drill, you can go back to two. What I do when I do this drill is I'm going to make sure that I hit this golf ball, but I don't let it curve to the pole side. So it's going to start for me as a right-handed golfer. It's going to start to the left, but it can't curve to the left curves to the right and what you're going to what you're going to see in fact you know what i'm going to do i'm going to record this okay so that you get an idea of what this looks like we get it yep. yeah okay so i get in here like this and i have done this drill i can't even tell you how many times i've done this drill now that golf ball leaves it starts out to the left it has 960 rpms of right spin in fact greg i don't know whether you can put a trace on that shot shape but in the meantime come on over here gibsy because i want to show uh jeff here what happens so you can see how i've got the golf ball on the on the heel of the golf club it's well forward in the stance as you well saw now i'm going to draw a line on the shaft plane there now what this is going to do is this is so getting stuck is when the club is behind you, where your hands are behind you, where you have too much depth in the hands and the path is so much to the to the end out that you actually stand up on it when you come through. And then you have to flip your forearms to try to recover the, the uh, path of that because the path is so out to the right, the ball is going to go out there unless you shut the face, which is why you need a lot of hand activity and why it's a really bad idea to play that way. In fact, I played in college that way, and that's why I was a Division Three player because I, I thought, well, i got to bring the club from the inside, and then I try to release the club. Bad idea. So watch what happens here. 
So club goes outside. Now when I start to come down, you're still going to see my head drop. So I still have that. There's the head dropping down. But now look at the head of the golf club. It's nowhere near this yellow line. When you get stuck, you're, the golf club is under here. When you're unstuck, the golf club is over here. It's on top of the plane. So watch where the club is. Club is coming right over there, over the top. Now it's over the top, over the top, over the top. Look at how much body rotation I have here. My body is rotated almost wide open here. Club shaft is dead on the initial shaft plane line, but now look at how much body rotation I have there. And by the way, I haven't flipped the club face. So the club is in a nice open position. So what happens is Gibbsy, pull that shot, pull the sim full if you would. And you can see that ball started out to the left and then fell over to the right-hand side. So the club face is open when I come through there. But yes, the path of the club is feeling like it's out and over. So now I've done that, control the face. So there's no flipping there. So that was really exactly what I wanted to do. So now I do that drill a lot and I get the feeling of what you're going to get the feeling of is your lead shoulder from the top of the backswing is going forward and down. And when the lead shoulder goes, go ahead to the uh, camera one, if you would. When my lead shoulder goes forward and down, now the club works way out over the top. If my shoulder goes backward and up, now the shaft of the club lays down and it works too much from the inside or stuck. So what you do now is, and this is, the, this is where your imagination is going to be your best friend. What you do is you imagine that there's a ball right, right there in that forward position. You still have the golf ball where you want it, but now you're imagining a second ball. And then what you say to yourself is hit the second ball. So I get in here like this, and now I'm going to feel the lead shoulder go down and open, forward and down, boom, hit the second ball. And now what I get is I get a really good strike. There's a, a pretty straight shot, obviously a little bit more distance and nowhere near the curve. I don't have to worry about that ball curving. Now, come over here and let's look at that. Oh, hey, Greg, can you pull that, that back up again? Because I want you to see what happened with the path. So here's the path right here. 1.1 degree in to out. Now, for those of you that are stuck, you're like 12 degrees in to out. Now you're 1.1 degree in that, which is basically you're dead down the line. So even though that thought going this would produce when the ball's forward, a way out and over when the ball is where I want the ball to be, my normal ball position, now I get a path that I'm looking for. And that's exactly what I got there. And that's exactly what you're going to get. Okay. All right, Gregory, go ahead. Okay. From Michael, this is another one. I think I might know what you're going to say here. Um, I'm having left hip joint replaced next week. How do I work on hip turn when I resume practice and play? All right. So um, let me just tell you something. First, I'm not a doctor. Okay. I have, I, I, I concur. Don't, <laughs> I don't want to be a doctor. I know they get paid nicely, but I have no interest in dealing with all the things that happen when you become a doctor. And so I, 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 all I would tell you is consult the doctor when you start to do this. But from what I understand, when you go through this, this new hip, you've got to build the, the strength back up in your legs and all that. You got to build up everything. And what I would tell you is, and I'm, I'm, this is a terrible, an, I mean, a terrible answer. And the terrible answer is, I'm not going to tell you anything because it's all going to depend on how your hip recovers. And if your hip gets back to, um, where we'll call it normal, whatever normal is, your hip gets back to normal. Now, all of a sudden, then you can start to work on things. But there's so many variances and degrees of rotation that can be added or taken away as a result of the hip. I can't even hazard a guess as to what you would do, except what I would tell you to do is you got to go see somebody, um, not just a doctor, but go see somebody that can actually like put you through some tests to find out what you can and can't do. The most important thing that you can do in our word of the day uh, today was evaluate. The most important thing that you and your coach can do is evaluate what you're going to be able to do. 
And so what I would say to you is in a terrible answer, I can't answer that question. You got to, that's, that is a, that's a completely different, um, that, go, that, that I would, that would be, it would be terrible for me to give you a, a, an answer there. I would just be making it up. I'm not going to do it. Sorry. Stick to your PT too. Don't, don't try to cheat that. Um, yeah. This one from Jay. I've heard you and others talk about pushing with the trail arm on the downswing by extending the elbow. I can't seem to get a feel for that. My elbow extends early. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I do. So this is a common problem. And, and what's it for Jay? Jay. Yeah. And so Jay, this, this typically happens when you have an open club face, you have an open club face. You cannot, particularly if you're a pretty decent golfer, you cannot play open faced and have a bent trail elbow at strike. You just can't do it. There's no way you can do it because the ball's not going to stay on the property. And so what you do is you take the club face, you open it up, and then you straighten the arm to try to square the club face in the downswing. What I would tell you to do is grip the club at a dress a little bit more in your fingers of your lead hand and in the palm of your trail hand. So the club face would be closed. And then, and I would say, make it crazy closed, like ridiculously closed. So that if you hit it and you extend that arm, this thing is going to go to the pull side so fast, it'll make your, your head spin. And so what you'll do then from there is you'll take this closed face and you'll maintain every, you'll do everything you can to try to keep it open. And when you keep it open, now all of a sudden your body's going to rotate, your trail arm is going to be bent. And you'll, and you'll get rid of the problem, but you got to take the grip first and get it crazy, crazy, crazy strong. Like for the right-handed golfer, crazy to the right side. So you get in here like this. You can see how, how strong that is. Look at how low my trail shoulder is right there. And now what you're going to do from here is you're just not going to let it hook. And what happens is, is that your trail arm will stay really bent as you go through that. It'll be very difficult for you to make solid contact for an extended period of time. And by the way, that brings up something that, that I think is so important for people to, to appreciate. Um, and I'm going to use my son as an, uh, to give you an analogy. So he's learning how to stop on ice skates. He wants to play hockey. And he's having a difficult time stopping. So I brought him to my friend, Rand Pecknold, who's the, the coach of uh, the Quinnipiac men's hockey team. And he said, you got to teach him how to how to use the edges of his skate inside, outside edges of his skate gives he pull this full if you would. So what he had him do was on one skate, turn to one side and then turn to another side and create zigs and zags and using his weight and the outside edge of the skates or the inside edge of the skates. Well, he was okay with his right skate. He was brutal with his left and he ended up just like push it because he couldn't keep his balance. And he said, dad, that drill's no fun. I, I can't do it. And my response is, that's exactly why you're doing that drill, because you can't do it. And you do the drill until you can do it. And now what that means is, and why I, I wanted to bring that up to you is, this is going to be a hard drill for you. You are going to struggle making contact. It's not going to be fun. Keep doing it until it's not hard for you to do. And when it becomes not hard for you to do, then you will have, you will have attained the skill that you're trying to attain, which is to maintain the bend in this trail arm. S drills are there for you to acquire a skill. You drill for the skill. If the drill's hard, that means you're really far away from the skill and you need to keep doing it. As the drill gets easier, you're getting closer to attaining the skill. When the drill no longer is a challenge at all, then you have the skill. And what I can tell you is, is that it takes time. It takes patience. 15 to 18 minutes every day, as I told you. Don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid to embrace the challenge of overcoming a, an issue or developing a skill. Run to it. Don't run from it. Okay? All right, my friend. Okay, this is from uh, Matt. Shouldn't the right hip be higher than the left hip at the top of the backswing? 
Okay, so the lo logical question is, well, why is that? I see where you're going. And, and the idea is, well, listen, if this is turning, like at a dress, my, my hips are on an angle this way. So if it's turning, then this lead hip would be going down and this trail hip would be going up. That would make sense. And I'm with you. That makes sense, except that's not what happens. What happens is, is that when you start to turn from here, there's a sinking down of this trail side that goes this way. You don't know this, but it actually sinks down into here. And when this, when these turn, they're not, they're not turning. Like if, if you stood straight like this and then tried to tilt your hips dramatically, I mean, you're talking like an inch. It's not significant. But what happens is, is that when you're screwing this, this uh, weight into the, to the trail heel, you're screwing it into the ground. This is going to go down. I know it sounds, it sounds like what that doesn't make. Yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense, but let me ask you this. What in golf makes sense? I mean, seriously, what in golf makes sense? Not much. That's very difficult for us. This is why we're all confused. It's part of the thing. And so what I would tell you is no, there isn't, it, there isn't a noticeable difference in the height if any at all. I mean, to me, it is literally like an inch. So if it's an inch, if it's only an inch, don't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Gregory. Okay. Um, I think this was right around the same time you were talking about this. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what this one means, okay. um, but does presetting the left hip at a dress work? Presetting the left hip at a dress work. I, my guess is, is that when you're talking about presetting, you're talking about doing this. So if presetting is taking your hips and going like that, this is where, this is back to that other question that, that was just asked by the individual beforehand, whose name uh, escapes me. Matt. But if I, Matt, Matt, if I bend dead straight, which you don't do, what you do is there's always a little bit of movement this way at a dress. I, I, there's, it should almost look like the the trail leg is kinked in a little bit more than the lead leg. You can go back to that singular shot there, Gibbsy. You go back to that, yeah. And so you can see this trail leg is tilted in a little bit more. This lead leg is is it's tilted, but it's not as much, which means that this lead hip is just again an inch. It's just slightly higher than the trail hip. And so then when you turn. Now, all of a sudden, this is turning. It's kind of like the hips are like this, and then they turn like that. Well, obviously, that hip doesn't go high. It's going to be going down, but it's going down to level. So when you preset it, preset it with weight. That's how you preset it. So what I like to do is I like to feel this. Just get in here like this, and then you're just going to you just add a little bit of this. You can barely see it. It's just a little bit of that. Yeah, it's just like an inch. And then right there. Now you feel this lead leg, it's your brace, it's like a kickstand. And now when you turn, now you're throwing that hip behind. So you're in here like this, boom, boom. That was peppered. This one was peppered. 120 miles an hour of ball speed, 184 yards in the air with a nice little start to the right and a nice little twist to the left. So just, just preset it just a, li just a little I call it a gink. Just give it a little gink. Not a lot of slide, just a little gink. Okay. All right. Go ahead. This is from Mickey. If your body is going down in the downswing, how do you avoid sticking the club into the ground? Um, because so Gibbsy, go down the line if you would. So, so imagine my spine is like this, right? If I keep this where it is and drop this down, I'm in trouble. But if I take this and I let this go back and I spin it around this right here, so this goes down, but this goes back, now I'm not going to stick it in the ground. So that's the first thing you have to understand. This here is going down, but this is going back. So I'm not really not necessarily going down into the ground because I'm creating space this way as I'm going down. The second thing is go to a face on if you would. Now, here's what I need you to appreciate, okay? When I come into a strike, 
we all know that we want to have shaft leaned. So the shaft of the golf club is leaning this way, isn't it? Which means the height of this golf club here, let me do it this way, because this will be a little bit easier. I'll show you. So I'm going to bring this up to here. Okay, so now there's the height of my golf club right there. Okay, so here's the height of my golf club right here. Now I lean the shaft like this. See how much lower this is over that? And that's probably about, I don't know, that looks to me like it's about seven or eight degrees. With a six iron, I, I'm trying to get nine, so it might even be there like that. But it's about an inch and a half or two that, that the handle of the golf club, because it's leaning, has gone down, right? Which means it's narrowed, it's gotten smaller. So if I take this and I go back up to this original height, now the head of the golf club is two inches above the ground. Okay, if the club is two inches above the ground and I'm dropping down two inches, which is about average on the PGA Tour with, with uh, a six iron, it's about a two inch drop. Now all of a sudden they even out. So when you get in here and you get to impact like this and you lean this like this and then you bend your elbow like that, now you've got right side bend and you're, you're, you're over the ball, you're down on the ball. But the other thing that's going on is I'm not going this way, I'm going this way. So body is rotating open. So you get into this. This drops down, rotates this way. Elbow stays bent. Club head is up. Handle is forward, which means I call it a short shaft. I've got short shaft at the strike, which means I can go down to, to the ground to get it, which means I can drop down to hit it. Now, you're 100% right. If you go down, you straighten the club, you're going to dig a ditch, which is why... You can't, I mean, straighten the arm, not straighten the club. When you straighten the arm and you go down, you're going to dig a ditch. You can't do that. You got to make sure that trail arm stays bent. And as you're going down and rotating, this is going back. Obviously, I don't have a lot of weight out on the toes. I've got weight dispersed properly. In fact, when I come to the strike, there's probably a little bit more heel weight on the lead foot. There's, it's probably in the arch of the trail foot as I'm going this way. And then when that heel comes off, then it goes to the toe. So we go like this. Trail arm stays bent, body rotates open. Save that push until the very end. And now we go this way. And now I go into that. This one might have even gone faster than, yeah, it did. It went 122.4 and also had a nice, now, yeah, there you go. Look at that, 122.4 ball speed, 189. Look at that apex, 100 feet. So that's how that happens. Again, these are little nuances that you need to work on, but that's going to be found. That can be found with that trail arm. And one of the things that's going to happen to you, by the way, when you work on that trail arm, keeping it bent, when you initially do it correctly, you will hit the ball thin because you're, you haven't dropped down. So one of the things that there's an art, and this is one of the things I love talking about um, with Butch about what he's doing with Ricky, is he said Ricky had gotten flat in his golf swing. And so he needed to make two changes. One change was he needed to get his arms up into the air. When he got his arms up into the air, the club was laid off. And then what he did was he, he taught him to get the arms up, got him comfortable with that. And then what he did was he then worked on the hip turn, which all of a sudden brought the club dead down the line exactly where he wanted it. What that tells you is there's, an, there's a sequence to the information that's being presented to you. And what you have to do is you have to work on one until you get the skill. And then after you have that skill, then you can work on another. You don't work on it all at the same time. You work at it all, all of it on the same, at the same time, you're going to run into trouble. And so simply put, what you do is this, you develop the skill of the bent arm and you keep working that and keep working that and hit it thin. It's good. That's what you should be doing. And then once you get it to where you're hitting it thin and you get that arm, it's staying bent. Now, all of a sudden, now you start working on sandwiching that can up against the wall and the body will start to go down and now the arm will stay bent. And now all of a sudden you're going to pepper it and you're going to pick it. Your ball speed is going to jump up a lot because your club head speed will have increased yet. You won't, it won't be translating into the golf ball because you're hitting it thin. And then all of a sudden, when you start doing that other move, now your ball speed is going to go way up because you now have the power of the arm, but also you're getting the power of the strike and you're going to, the, the speed of the club will be translated into the speed of the golf ball. And that's when you're going to start really playing good. Okay. All right, Gregory, let's get, get one or two more. Okay, this one, um, this may be the individual you were talking about earlier. This is Carrie. 
uh, due to some hip issues, had the arms running off, causing a left and somewhat steep path. Hip pain is gone, but how do you recommend getting the arms uh, and club back synchronized with the body rotation? Okay, so how do we how do we get the arms working together um, with the body? Well, first, we got to stop thinking about the arms. We got to start thinking about the lower body. So I would be using lower body instead of body. That would be the thing that I would be thinking about. How can I get the lower body dominating this? Now, how do we take the upper body out? Okay, so one of the ways to take the upper body out is this. The good news for all of us is we have head covers. Those of us that are, that are um, fortunate enough, we have TSR head covers because we play Titleist products. <laughs> Come on, let me have a little fun. So what you do is you take these things and you put them under your arms like this. Now, in order to, to and, and what I like is I like making sure because these the way these, these head covers are built, what I like to do is I like to do it so that it folds to the inside, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna make some swings. Don't do it with your upper body, lower body. So lower body here, here, here. And you're gonna hit a lot of fat shots. And why are you gonna hit fat shots? Because the club's gonna go way, way, way to the inside. Gibbsy, let's go down the line here. Not with a, yeah, with a one, perfect. So you go here and the club is not gonna have any lift to it. It's just gonna be working around. So we go here and here. And what's going to happen for you is, is that you get used to, it's almost like you're swinging. It's almost like you're hitting the ball like this. This is steering it. And then what you do is after you do that for a little while, you get those head covers out of the way and you still feel like you're doing the same thing. And what I like to do when I'm doing this drill is I, I really lighten my grip pressure. I, most of you, when you do this, you'll tighten your grip pressure. I want to lighten the grip pressure because the grip pressure, when it's light, now all of a sudden I get the feeling that I'm dragging the club, which will lift the head off the ground. Okay. So I go like this, really light grip pressure, twist, and then go. And what happens is, is that the club starts to follow the body. And you just keep doing that. And then once you get comfortable with that, opposite of what, what Butch did with, with Ricky, because what, what we're dealing with now is we're dealing with a lot of arms up in the air. That's what Carrie was saying. Arms are running off from the body, so everything is way, way up here. Then after this gets too much for this, and you go, now all we're going to do is we're going to let it turn, but we're going to just try to feel like our right arm is pushing it's what I call a turn and fold. We turn and fold up with the right arm and all of a sudden you're going to start to, to hit it solidly. And again, very, very light grip pressure. I'm a big fan of very, very light grip pressure in that particular drill. All right, Carrie, good luck to you and thanks for uh, everything. And you know what everything is. All right, go ahead. Let's get one more question. Okay, here. last one from SB Hala. Um, Hi, Michael. I have a bowed wrist at the top, but my club is going across the line. How can I fix this issue? Bowed wrist and across the line. Bowed wrist and across the line. So we're going to need a camera one here, Gibbsy. So bowed wrist, wrist and across the line. So now we're like this, and now we're like this. So club is across the line, and the wrists are bowed. Now, how did we get here? Well, let's now track that. So that probably came from here, which means what we did was when we took the club back, we let our arms push away and the club went inside. So we went like this. The, 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 the handle rises, but we don't lift the shaft. We don't spin the shaft. We go here, in like this, wrist bows. Now we're in here. Now we go across and now we're bowed and across the line. Okay, that's probably what happened. Now, how do we solve the problem? We just solve the problem by doing this. We take this little swim noodle. It's right here. We put that down the line. That's right. That's right there. Now, I'm going to lean this in here like that. So if I do my bow and take it inside, my club's going to go underneath this or hit that thing. Okay? So what I want to do is 
I want to take the club and I want to lift the head and drop the handle because what you're doing is you're lifting the handle and dropping the head. So you want to lift the head and drop the handle. And when you lift and drop, lift and drop, now all of a sudden the club is going to go up and above and then you're going to come down on that and you're not going to be anywhere near crossing the line at the top. It'll be maybe laid off a little bit if it is. So now we go lift, drop, and now look at where my club is. So the club is way over here and my wrist is no longer bowed. Lift the head, drop the handle. So it goes, and then you'll, you'll turn this thing basically into an ax. Now you won't do that, but it'll feel like that. Okay, so lift and drop. So we go boom, boom. Club is going to get laid off here. Toe is going to hang. You won't have a problem with that. Okay. All right. So listen, I tell you all this all the time. Thank you so much for joining us as you have and continue to do every Thursday. Tell people about us. Let, us, let, them, let them know we're here to try to help you play better golf and have a little fun. We all have fun with this sport. It's like it's just like nothing else. And the challenge to me is 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 something special. We're coming into a very special time in our game right now. Tiger Woods is is playing again, and it's going to be fun to see what takes place after this week. Are we going to be treated to him playing in another event? Or is he going to play at the Players Championship? Maybe uh, Bay Hill. Maybe not. Maybe the next time we see him after this week is we see him at uh, at at Augusta National in the Masters. Whatever we know this. We don't get a lot of these, and we don't get a, a lot of times to watch Tiger play. Hopefully, he plays great. Hopefully, the the uh, ankle is is fine, and we see him play more often. But please, uh, I, and I mean this, appreciate what you're watching because what you're watching is a guy that loves the game of golf the way we love the game of golf, and he's just been able to do it a whole lot better than we've been able to do. And so, it's a rare. This is a rare individual that we're being treated to. Um, in our passion for the game of golf and watching the game of golf. So enjoy that. But also, too, embrace the challenges of trying to get better. You know, as I said before, drill to skill. Make sure that you're putting in the time, you're putting in the effort, you're, you're working hard at, at developing that skill. Don't jump around with varying swing thoughts. Stay with what you're trying to, to solve, whatever uh, issue that you got. Stay with that skill that you're trying to develop and solve uh, the problems that you're having. OK, I'm telling you right now, you keep doing that and it's going to pay off. Might not be better tomorrow and it might not be better the next day. But I'm telling you down the road, you're going to be able to see the, the fruits of your labor. Also, speaking of, of labor, I want to say a special thank you again to Steve Gibbs and Greg Ducharme, who, who are with us every single week doing this, making all this stuff happen. So um, thanks to those guys. And, and of course, if you ever have a question of anything, you can send us emails at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. You can join me. Um, on a new breed of golf on Sirius XM Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern. You can also email us, email us here or just get involved in our chats with what we're doing here. A lot of content that we're putting out to try to help you play better golf. And I hope that all of you are playing better golf. I hope everybody has a wonderful week and we look forward to, uh, well, weekend. We look forward to talking with you again tomorrow on Sirius XM and next week after Tiger has made the cut and he's going to make the cut.